Good morning. How we doing? Man, are we enjoying worship this morning? Come on. Well, about 20 of you are, all right? The rest of you are like, man, I'm hot. It's crunched, all right? Man, this is a good problem. That's how heaven's going to be, amen? Because we're populating heaven, and that's what this series is all about, leaving a lasting impact so we can ultimately populate heaven, amen? And hopefully you guys have been going and living that out every single day. Uh, and so, Pastor Amy, like she just did, we want to welcome those who are joining us online. Can we do that real quick? Can we welcome them? They're in their pajamas or driving their car, doing whatever, and so we're glad that you're with us. But man, it nothing beats being in the room. Give them a little shout out. Come on. So, uh, man, before I introduce JC, man, can you just stand with me? And, and uh, as you're standing, I want to remind you that next week I'll be preaching. Then the following week, we've got Pastor Dino Rizzo from the Church of the Highlands, also the CEO of ARC. Uh, one of our partners is going to be with us. Going to be another huge day, phenomenal day. And like Pastor Amy said, remember, we have two other options to worship. Uh, so we continue to invite, invite, invite. You're doing a phenomenal job of inviting. So give yourself a real quick hand. Can we do that? And... Uh, so let's keep doing that. But man, we want to take a posture of surrender as we, before we open up God's word. You ready to get into God's word today? And so let's just take that and ask God to speak to you today. Father, I just pray right now as we take this posture of surrender today. God, we just ask and pray right now that you would, would show up in ways like you've never showed up in our lives today. God, that, that today, God, that we would no longer be an audience, but that, God, you're raising up an army to go make a difference for you. And so, God, walk off the pages of Scripture like we pray every week. God, may, may, may you be a fine surgeon. May you take out of us what needs to be taken out. Would you put into us what needs to be put into us? And, God, may we walk out of this place empowered by you to go make a difference for you. God, I pray for revival in this house today. We're praying for revival in each of our houses that we represent. Fill us today, God. In your name I pray. And everybody said... Hey, before you take a seat, turn around, find two people who don't know, give them a fist bump, and ask them where they're taking you to lunch today. Come on. Come on. Anybody get a legit invite? Did anybody get a legitimate invite? All right. Real quick, we've been doing this survey. How many people got their Christmas trees up this week? Okay, yeah, we're getting more and more, man. Some of you Thanksgiving people are holding on, but I'm telling you, it's coming. You're going to break. Hey, man, we are privileged today to have a guy who has become one of my best friends over the last three years. Uh, uh, was going through a season right after that whole COVID thing where, man, I was just kind of tired in ministry. And uh, Nicole and I actually prayed that God would put some people in my, our lives and in my life uh, that could encourage me, could coach me, could help me get to the next level as a leader. And, uh, and a guy named Sean Lovejoy connected me with a guy named J.C. Worley. And that doesn't stand for Jesus Christ. All right, I already knew Jesus Christ. I just didn't know J.C. Come on, man. And, uh, and man... I want you to know he does pastor one of the fastest growing churches in America right now, and it's called Go Church down in Atlanta, Georgia. But man, he is an anointed communicator, but most importantly, more than that, he is an anointed man of God who's pursuing righteousness every single day. And so it is our incredible privilege, you hear me? Our incredible privilege today to bring honor to him in this house today. So can you help me do it the best way we can, like a bunch of... Hill Jacks of Grant County, Indiana. Come on. Can we do that? Come on, give us the praise. Welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what I'm talking about. I, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what a Hill Jack is, so, uh, so you did it really well. Hey, uh, why don't we do this? Can we just honor Jesus together? Come on, if you love the Lord, put your hands together. Let's worship Jesus. Come on. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Thanks for having me here. You know, the, the 8.30 service was just powerful. And then to look around this room, I mean, it is, it is packed in here. you got overflow happening. We'll come back for a third service of the day. And then if he doesn't buy me lunch, I'm never coming back. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Uh, feed the man of God. Can I get an amen from some hungry folk? You know, I've, been try I've actually been trying to get here for about three and a half years, and I, I, the first time I met Pastor Matthew, I heard about what God was doing at the river, and I said, I'd love to come preach for you. There was a long pause on the other end of the line, and he said, you know, Pastor Jason, I'm going to be honest with you, like, uh, you're not ready. I was like, what, what do you mean I'm not ready? He's like, well, 
see at the river like they are very intelligent, Bible-minded, Scripture-knowing people, and I'm not sure that you know the Word enough to come and preach to them. I was like, I get it. So for the last three years, y'all been going back to school. I've got another degree in theology. So I called him back, and I was like, hey, man, I got a degree in theology, another degree. I, th- I think I'm ready. And he's like, ah. you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, you're, 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 you're just not ready. Like, I've heard you preach before, and, like, you're a good communicator, but the river, like, they're, they're used to my preaching. And he's like, like I, can't, I can't afford a, we're, there's a lot of momentum. I can't afford a Sunday just to go down. It's got, it's got to go up. He's like, you're just not ready. I was like, oh, man, this is, all right, I get it. So I, I've been in preaching and communicating classes. I'm learning how to be a better communicator and working on that skill. And so I finished that and got a certificate of completion in preaching and teaching. So I called him back and I was like, look, I've got a Bible degree again. I've got a new certificate in preaching and communicating. Like, I, I'm, I'm ready. I am ready. And I said, I tell you what, um, you don't even have to pay me. I'll pay my own way to come and preach. And he goes, now you're ready. <laughs> so thank you so much. It's an honor to be here and pay my own way. And... Uh, <laughs> But you will buy me dinner. Come on, somebody. Um, let, me, let me say this, just if you're visiting. That, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. So uh, they've been incredibly kind, and your church is generous. When you look around this room, uh, don't take for granted what God is doing right here. This is supernatural. I don't travel a ton. That's by, by just choice. Uh, I think it's important for our ministry to be grounded at our church. But when I do travel, um, this is not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal to have people this close to me. Like, that's just not normal. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, this is unbelievable. And so that only happens by two ways. God's favor. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. The church can only grow by the favor of God. And God's favor is on this place and great leadership. And so we've already honored the Lord with worship in the ministry moment and a moment ago just with showing him how much we appreciate the Lord in his favor. But I want to honor this family Uh, Pastor Matthew, Nicole, the first family, I want to tell you guys, you are great leaders. You are a great friend. You're a great husband and wife. You're going to be great grandparents. Come on, it's going to, it's like a whole new world. A little, a little lovey, a little big daddy. Come on, somebody. A little big daddy. How many grandparents in the room? Grandparents in the room. They say grandparenting is the best. As a matter of fact, I've heard, don't kill your kids because one day they'll give you grandkids. Come on, so... Got grandkids coming. How about we do this? So can we honor this family? If you love your pastors, come on, let them know. No, no, you can do better than that. Let's go. Come on. You guys are awesome. You're awesome. Come on, honor them like a hill jack would. <laughs> Still don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> Hey, if you got your Bible, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, if, you, if you got your scripture, you can flip there, your, you know, uh, uh, electronic device, your smartphone. If not, it's on the screen here. And I want to show you this, this verse here as we continue this series that you've been engaged in now for the third week, talking about just living out your impact, making a difference in the lives of others. And in preparation of this, uh, this, this verse just genuinely, the, the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart to, to kind of begin this whole conversation. And so the, the scripture says as follows, for in him, that, that's God, all things were created. Everything was created by God. He is the giver of life. In the beginning, God created, right? Things in heaven, things on the earth, things that you see, things you can't see. How many of you believe that there is a supernatural world that you can't see that is even more real than the natural world that you do see? Come on, amen to that. Uh, Whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Now, many of you, you know this line that I'm about to tell you, but I want today to be an encouragement and a reminder, or for some of you, perhaps it is truly a revelation, but God created everything, including you. God created you. God made you. And you think about this, the God of the universe, the God of the heavens and the earth, the God that in six days he made everything, and then on the seventh day he rested, the God that told every mountain to be raised and every valley to be low, 
The God that tells the waves when to break and the sun when to rise. The God that tells the earth when to rotate on its axis. The God that from his fingertips, fire came and thunder quakes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That God made you. Fearfully and wonderfully made you. Now, God didn't create you and then give you a purpose. God already had a a purpose, a specific purpose, and so he created you. So here's the encouragement today, if you're, if you're taking notes, and I want you to do that. You are alive on purpose and for purpose. And it's the heart of this house, and it's truthfully the, the love letter from God to you to help you to discover that God-given purpose. And he gave you this purpose. He had an assignment for you. And in order to accomplish this God-given purpose, he gave you every gift, talent, and ability that you possess. So instead of complaining about the gifts and the talents that you don't have, use and leverage the gifts and talents that you do have. So if you have the gift to write, then write. If you have the gift to, to, to speak publicly, then speak publicly. Some of you have the gift to sing, so you should sing. Some of you, though, you should never sing. <laughs> Come on, look at somebody near you and say, man, he's preaching right at you. Like, just keep that, you know. Whatever it is, though, know this, that you are alive on purpose and for purpose. And what is that purpose? Well, ultimately, your purpose is to not live here on earth forever. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to tell you, I don't know how you feel about the world that we live in, but I don't want to live on this earth forever. Anybody with me? Like, I don't, I, don't even, I don't even watch the news any longer because it creates unnecessary anxiety and fear and concern. You know, the, the, the news that I get is just from, you know, like, Twitter, which is now X, and so that gives me real time. I don't watch Fox News, MSNBC News, CNN News, because they all lie anyway. Come on. Only God tells the truth. Can I get an amen right there? I don't want to live in this world forever. Now, I don't want to leave this world prematurely of fulfilling the purpose that is on my life, but whenever God calls me home, whenever God calls you home, I want to make sure that my purpose while I'm here, however much I, I live here, however long I live here, that I leave behind something that does, an impact, a ripple effect. When I was a kid growing up, I used to skip rocks on, on the pond. How many of you know that? Like a hill jack. <laughs> I am gonna use that all day. When I get home, my kids are, clean your room like a hill jack would clean their room. What's that mean, daddy? I don't know. But hill jack it up, baby. You gotta, you gotta help me with a hill jack. You used to skip rocks on a pond, though, what, what, and some of you were really good at it. Man, you could skim that rock, and it would skip a few times. Some of you, you'd skip it and plunk, you know, but, but if you skip it a few times across that pond, what would it create? Ripple effects. That, that's, that's the purpose of your life, to create ripple effects, not being selfish, but being selfless. And at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the, this is the reality, this is the truth, it's YOLO. Like, you you only get one life. And I I don't know what day God will call me home or God will call you home. Now, you can Google that. There's a thing called the death clock, and it will calculate when you're going to die. That's not going to be true either. God is the one that, that gives and takes away. God numbered the days of your life. But you you only get one life to make an impact. And when you breathe your last breath and you stand before God, listen to me because this is really important because some of you are wasting your life. When you breathe your last breath, there are no redos. There There are no replays. There are no rewinds. That There is no reincarnation. You're not coming back as a tree or an insect or an animal, you don't come back as a cow, moo. No, that ain't gonna happen. And some people believe that. No, you get one life, this life. And in Genesis, and I told the men this at the men's conference, and God gave you dominion over your life. You get to choose how your life looks. Will it look inward or will it look outward? Will it look selfish or will it look selfless? Will you follow the pattern and the trajectory of your family's history, or will you be the one that changes your family tree? Can I get an amen from somebody? Come on, like, you get to decide. Now, the average life expectancy varies. Typically, women live longer than men, and there's no reason to explain that. Men are just idiots. Come on. The famous last word of most men before they die is, hey, watch this, you old hill jack. And then... 
and then they die. It's just how it works. Women, thank you. Women have wisdom. Come on, ladies. Women are smart. And the only reason a man even makes it into his 70s is because woman helped him to get there. I mean, God made man in his image. He's like, oh, man, this is good, but he don't need some help. And he gave us women. Are we thankful for women? Come on. Thank God for women. All you married men, you better be clapping right now because you married up. You don't deserve her. Matthew Trexler. <laughs> Females live about 81 years. Men live, you know, into their 70s. You get, you get, you get one life. So what are you going to do with these eight decades, these nine decades? What are you going to do with it? Carpe diem sees the day. Every day you wake up and you see it as a privilege and an honor that God woke. Do you know that God woke you up today? There are a lot of people around the world, they didn't wake up today. God woke you up today and he clothed you in your right mind and he set your feet on solid ground and he gave you an opportunity that in this day to point everything and everyone back to the cross of Jesus. Or are you just going to go through the motions? Taking for granted this day. Going to work tomorrow, that same old job, nine to five. To make money to pay the bills, to try to figure out how to feed your hungry children. That's a reality. To pay the mortgage. I don't know what it's like here in Marion, but in Atlanta, we have this thing called inflation. Like, it's, it's there. That's not a political statement. That's a reality. Life is expensive. Amen. And society conti continues to pressure you with You've got to be successful. You've got to be wealthy. If your life has any worth or value to it, you better have a, a 401k and you better have retirement and, and you, you, you better drive a nice car and you better live in a nice house and you better own a brown suit and a cream colored mock neck. <laughs> but how much money you make and the clothes you wear and the shoes on your feet and the land you own and, 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 and that doesn't place value on your life. I'm not saying it's not important to have goals and dreams and objectives, but, 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 but don't, don't confuse the value and the worth of your life. It is not based in how much money you make or what your paycheck looks like. No, life is not about just making a living. Life is about making a difference. It's, it's the ripple effect. Does that make sense? Anybody with me yet? So, so what are you doing with this life that God has given you? And he's given you dominion over it. And I got saved when I was 19 years old. So I, I tell everybody that my life is almost divided right in half. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm into my 40s now. I know I look exceptionally young for a hill jack, but I'm still. <laughs> I got saved at 19 because I was tired of just trying to survive I was tired of being bound by the same addictions and strongholds as those in my family before me, and I had hit rock bottom. And I knew that the only way out was up in Christ Jesus, so I gave my heart to the Lord at 19 years old. And I've committed this next season of my life, for the rest of my life, to making an impact. I say this all the time. I tell Go Church this, and almost every time I stand in front of a group of people and and just preach and teach God's word. If God can save someone like JC, if God can use someone like JC, if God can promote with favor somebody like JC, everybody is a candidate. Amen. If God can help me to tell my story of God's saving grace and redemptive power and the ministry of reconciliation, and he can do that for me. I mean, it's my job to impact as many people as I can to tell you that there is hope, hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Let me get 150 people to say amen. Come on, if we're going to clap, let's do it well. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is all we need, and when we find Jesus, now we have this beautiful opportunity to tell everybody just how good Jesus is. In 1943, Abraham Maslow wrote a paper submitted to the scientific journal on what really motivates humanity. What are the motivations that people are driven by every day when they wake up? Why we do what we do? Why we act how we act? 
Come on, I got a 13-year-old son. Um, I ask him often, like, why you act that way? Why we do what we do, how we act, the reason we do that, what we are inherently striving for. And so he put these motivations together and he created them in a pyramid and they're, they're known as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How many of you, you, you've seen this before, you've studied this maybe in school or uh, I won't make you raise your hand and that's okay, but for some of you this may be the very first time that you've ever seen Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'll encourage you that as we build this pyramid that Maslow created, that you take a picture of it so that you can reference it uh, later or with someone else. So Maslow says the, the lowest point of motivation are known as just physical needs. These are basic needs. This is air, this is food, this is water, this is shelter, this is intimacy, this is sleep. And I, I think you and I, if I'm being honest, we take for granted the fact that we get air, food, and water, and shelter. I just came back from the Philippines, literally, earlier this week. I was in the Philippines. Many people there in that country, they, they don't have clean air, food, water, or shelter. Does that make sense? That this is, again, this is just the basic. This is survival. And the vast majority of humanity is just trying to survive. And that's some of you. I'm just trying to survive. I'm trying to make it from Sunday to Monday and Monday to Tuesday. That's not the, the, the life that God intends for you to live, just to survive. God wants you to thrive. And this is what this, this uh, pyramid will show you. And most importantly, through God's word, is that John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and have that life more abundantly, life to the full. God doesn't want you running around on, on fumes and empty. God, God wants you full, an abundant life. The, the, the second part of this pyramid talks about the motivation of safety needs. This is protection, security, law. It's why we lock our doors at night. It's why when you think somebody is broken into your house that you'll get up and just try to protect the family, Levi. It's why some of you that in the middle of the night when you run to get a drink from the refrigerator downstairs, you run back upstairs. Because you were just sold out on the idea that from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. somebody creeped in your house and just are sitting there to get you. It's why we fasten our seatbelts when we ride with Pastor Matthew. I did that this morning in the fog, and I, I, I double buckled. And the man, you know, I'm spirit-filled, charismatic. I prayed in tongues while he was driving. You know, I'm just like, Jesus, hallelujah, protect us, Lord. It's why we need law. This isn't a political statement, uh, but I just want to say this is why we should never defund the police. We need protection. We need security. This is why you ought to honor every single man and woman that has served in the military or currently serving Veterans Day is coming up. We honor you for your bravery and your courage. Come on, thank you. Uh, we need that. I, I, got, I got to hurry. I only got like 20 minutes, but watch. This is, don't miss this. Safety needs is the reason that the vast majority of you listening to me speak right now, you stay in a job that you don't love because it feels safe. You ever gone somewhere and you encounter an employee that you know within five seconds, they hate this job. And they hate that I'm here. Okay? The next motivation is this. Physical needs, safety needs. This is love needs. Love is family. It's affection. It's relationships. It's why so many people, they join a, like a society club or they, they rush a fraternity or a sorority. It's why many of you, I know that, that this is a sports community. It's why many uh, students, they become student athletes. Sure, they love the game, but what they love even more is the family, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the bond. It's why some people will get into a gang, even though the, the decisions that the gang make are violent and not godly. That's the only family they've ever known. Does that make sense? So, so they'll get into a gang simply because they're, they're longing for love. It's why, it's why people date, and they're trying to find a, a husband or a wife. Because they, they don't want to be alone forever. How many of you are single? Hold your hand up if you're single, just real quick. Now just keep it up for a second. Now just look around the room and see if there might be a match. <laughs> it's a little match, little matchy match. Now who are you going to lunch with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir, you can put, you can put, they see you. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to leave it up. I'm here, baby. I'm ready. Single ready to mingle. The, the next motivation is esteem needs. This is achievement, it's, it's status, it's success, it's responsibility, it's reputation. 
This is the need to be recognized. At this level, you care about two things. One, you care what you think about yourself, self-esteem, and then you care about what other people think about you. This is why almost all of us stood in front of a mirror this morning and got ready because we cared about what we thought about us, our self-esteem, but we also cared about what other people would think about us. It's why I looked at my hair like four or five times before I showed up. There's a lot of product in this. I can guarantee you a hilljack ain't never had that much product in their hair because <laughs> we care. So Maslow called these first four needs, these motivations, he, he called these the deficiency needs. And the truth is many people stay stuck right here. Statistically speaking, the majority of humanity stay stuck right here. Let me say it to you like this. Most people go through life stuck in this box, stuck right here. Just trying to figure out life. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life to the full. Now Maslow continues, and he calls the next four motivations or needs growth needs. So he introduces us to cognitive needs. Some of you, you, you know these because you're living in some of these growth areas. Cognitive needs are knowledge, meaning self-awareness. It's the appetite to understand and to grow and to learn Cognitive is all about thinking and reasoning and understanding and learning and, and remembering. It's why some of you, your favorite thing to do is read a good book. Oh, I love a good book. Boring. <laughs> but some of you, you love a good documentary. Or others of you, a good conspiracy. Oh, yeah. Is the earth flat? Okay, yo, hill jack, it ain't, buddy. It ain't flat, right? It's round. It's why many of you watch Fixer Upper. How many of you watch Fixer Upper? And then you watch, you're like, oh, I learned something new. I can do that. I can do that very, you ain't Chip or Joanna. Like, just lay it and call somebody. The best thing you can do, sir, is call somebody to come out and fix it, all right? But we got the cognitive needs. Then we get into aesthetic needs. This is beauty, balance, and form. It's why many of you appreciate beauty. It's why, and I know because you live here that it, it, snow becomes really old to you probably very, very fast, but there really is nothing like that first snow. Just the first snow, not the second, third, fourth, fifth. That's when you begin to lose your salvation, right? <laughs> but that first snow, you're like, oh, this is beautiful. It's why you wanna go on vacation. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna leave Marion in the fields to go to the beach yeah. because there's a beauty there. How, how many of you, when you vacation, you want the mountains, snow-capped mountains? Come on, a little fog over in a little log cabin with a fire, cooking a little s'more with some hot cocoa with your Christmas trees up. Come on, somebody. My wife, already in our house, by October the 27th, we had 10 Christmas trees up in my house. Some of y'all call us crazy. We just call ourselves Christians. We love the Lord, and we celebrate his birthday. You do you, boo, but in my house... Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Right? How many of you, though, vacation for you is the beach? Oh, man, think about the beach. The hot sun beating down on your skin. And some of y'all, you need a tan, boy. Ooh. The sand is so hot that it burns your toes. Ooh. You get to your chair, though, and there is a cool breeze as a seagull flies by and drops down for you, just a virgin pina colada. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Doesn't that feel so good? Oh, the waves are crashing. You take, no, you want to leave your shirt on. That's what you want to do, right? That ain't aesthetic beauty. Come on, somebody. That's a dad, this is a dad bod. That's why, why we dream about those things, because it's, it's the beauty that we appreciate. Then we get into the seventh. This is self-actualization. For many years, Maslow believed that self-actualization, this motivation, was the highest point of humanity. That here, when you reach self-actualization, which, by the way, only 2% of the planet's population will ever reach self-actualization. Because at this point, uh, you discover who you are. You discover your purpose. Have you ever thought or even asked, why am I alive? Why am I here? Come on, there's got to be more than just the, the mundane routine of, of, of every day and, and every week. And, and here is where you realize not just why you were made, but how you were made. You get, you get a, a, a more detailed look at, at your design, the intricacy of who you are. 
I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How, how well you know me, I, for I am complex. How many of you would admit that, that you are just a complex person? Okay, n- nobody's going to raise their hand. All right. That's fair. I mean, we're all complex. But here we begin to, to discover this. And what I love about your pastor and this church is they've created systems for you to move just beyond the basic survival all the way up to your purpose in life, why you are here, why did God create me, what's his plan for me. Does that make sense? But then one day, Maslow discovered that there's actually one more part of this pyramid, and it's called transcendence needs or transcendent motivation. And you know you have arrived at this level when at At motivation seven, self-actualization, you discover your gifts, talents, abilities, and God-given purpose, and then you use that to be a help to other people. That at this point, at transcendence living, you recognize my life is not my own. I am blessed to be a blessing. God has given me more than enough, not so that I can be selfish with it, but so that I can see hurting, broken humanity through the eyes of Christ Jesus and recognize that I've got one life, one life to leave a ripple effect on people. And every person that I come into contact with or I touch or I see is a mission field to help them get out of just barely surviving and get to the top of God's work for them, which is thriving. Come on the river, somebody say amen to that. Come on, let's clap for Jesus right there. Now, my family, my family is overly embarrassed and annoyed with me because everywhere we go, I talk to everybody. I talk to everybody. We went into the sporting goods store the other day. We, we have Dick's Sporting Goods Store. Do, do you have that? You got uh, Cabela's? Is that what you have here? You know, you get a sporting goods store. And we walked in, and the, and the young girl, she was like, hey, thanks for coming in. I was like, it's actually really good to be here. And my 13-year-old son was like, why do you do that? Why do you embarrass me? And when he does that, I take it up an even notch. I'm like, let's go. This is what we're looking for, baby. My son just made the basketball team middle school basketball. Oh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. He called me. I was in the Philippines. He's like, Dad, I'm going to try out for the team. I was like, son, that's awesome. He's tall, 13 years old. He's about as tall as I am, right at 6'1 and a half, 6'2". He said, I'm going to try out for the team. He's like, you got any advice? I was like, yeah, listen to me. Don't, don't miss this, what I'm about to tell you. In the tryouts, do not, for any reason, for the love of God, dribble with your left hand. <laughs> if they see you dribble with your left hand, you won't make the team. And he made the team because he put his left hand behind his back. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so, so here, let me get back to the point of all of this is I try to impact Every person that I see, I tell my team this all the time. I told some of your team this very thing this morning. You are responsible for the atmosphere of whatever room you walk in. You are the culture carrier. So if you don't like the the workplace environment, don't wait on somebody to change it. You change it. You you bring the party. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you, there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party, it don't stop. Come on now. You bring the party. You walk in there with passion. You walk in there with a smile on your face. You walk in there with the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Let them all look like they've been sucking on lemons, baby, but not me. Jesus did something in my life, and I will always give him glory and honor. And if I can just let my joy and my passion and my energy and and my ripple effect impact somebody, Lord, if you can use anybody, use me. Everything you've blessed me with, you have blessed me with it so I can be a blessing to other people. Let me get 150 people, that that's your prayer as well. Somebody say amen. Well, come on the river. Let's give God all the glory. Now, now I'm not, I'm not the brightest star in the sky. I'm not the smartest hill jack in the room. I didn't even know, I didn't even know what transcendence meant. So I went to the dictionary. Look at this. Exceeding usual limits. Woo, that fires me up. Because I grew up in a family that we just, we barely made it. I remember as a kid watching the repossession man come to our house and tow our car away. We were so poor, we pronounced it po. Come on. But beyond usual limits, surpassing 
Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know that this was a, a potential life that I could live. I thought I would always stay stuck in a box until I realized I got dominion over my life. Nobody owes me anything. Nobody's going to help me get anywhere. All I need is Jesus. He'll give me his favor, and he'll take me places no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store for those who believe. Watch, extending beyond the limits of ordinary experience. If you're bored with your life, it's a choice. You choose boredom. There, that's why when people say, well, I don't want to be a Christian because it's no fun. What? Now, many of you, you've got a testimony. You remember your BC days, your before Christ days. I've never had more fun in my life than when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior and I started serving him. Look, extending beyond the limits of ordinary experience, beyond comprehension. Does that not sound like a verse to you? Now to him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask, think, or even imagine, according to the power that works where? The Holy Spirit's power at work in you. Your life can be different if you follow the instructions of Christ. You want to get to transcendent living, where there you're showing empathy and compassion and care for humanity, where you're meeting the needs of others, where you're not so focused on your own pain and own problems because you realize that this very morning on your very row are other people that are also going through some storms. I'm not being mean, I'm just being a pastor. This world does not rotate on its axis for you. There are other broken people. And you can connect with those people to show them that, hey, we can grieve together, we can cry together, we can mourn together, but we can also celebrate together and have victory together. Amen. All right, so watch this. Jesus said this, you want, you want transcendent living? Then here's the rule. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, this is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let me show it to you like this as we close. Watch this. Love God. Love others. Learn your purpose. Live out your impact. This is it. I love you, God, with all of my heart. I'm not going half in. I'm going all the way in. I'm not going to ride the fence. Revelation says, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I spit you from my mouth. God wants you all in today. Go all in with Jesus. If you've not yet accepted Christ, you will never know life to the full, abundant life, unless you accept Jesus and allow him to be uh, the, the, the center of your heart, sitting on the throne of your heart. It's the only way. And then when you love God, you can't help but love other people because you realize that they are God's sons and daughters. Does that make sense? And then you learn the purpose. You learn your gifts and your talents. And then you say, now, I'm going to leverage those to help other people, to show them that there is a better way, and it is through Christ Jesus. And that is how you live out your impact. That's how you make the ripple effect. All right. I believe that these two verses here in Psalm 112 have, have been your theme verse for this series. I'm going to sit here for two minutes. Give me two minutes on one thought from these two verses. Here, here's what the scriptures say. You ready? Let's read it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. Here we go. You ready? A righteous. Right, two questions. Question one, what will people remember about you? What are they going to say about you? One day we'll breathe our last breath. There will be a funeral. Unless Jesus comes back, we will, all, we will all perish. At that celebration of your life, what are people going to say? What are they going to talk about? I know, I know I'm right at time, and I, and I want to honor that, so let me just do this really quickly and forgive my emotion. But, man, 
Like, I, I want people to be able to stand up whenever they celebrate my life that I lived and just talk about how, man, JC was a good, here, here's what I want. I want to be known as a good man, a good husband, a good dad. I want to be a really good dad. A good pastor. I tell my son all the time, we're Whirlies. That name, that last name never really meant much. It had no, no value, no credibility until I realized we can change that. So I tell my son Lakeland all the time, we're Whirlies, we're men of our word. I want to be known as a man of integrity and character. What are people going to say? What would they remember about you? Not what you want them to say about you, but what you're doing so that they can say that about you. You see the difference? Because you can't hope to be generous if you're, that they say that you're generous if you're not generous and you're stingy and greedy. You gotta make some decisions. And then secondly is, what, not only what will people remember, but what will God remember? Well, I don't, I don't understand that, what, what do you mean? Is God keeping like a record of my life? He is. I think it was last Sunday you talked about the books and then the book of life. In the books are written everything you've done. God will remember. Hebrews 6 says it this way. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you have shown him as you have what? Helped his people and continue to help them. Ripple effect. What will people say when you're gone? What will God say when you're gone? Watch this. Here's the closing question. When your life is over, will your impact even be remembered? Will it even be remembered? Or is it just a wasted life? Just went through the motions, only survived. But could I tell you that there is so much more? Heads bowed, eyes closed, real quick. Let's take 30 seconds and we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Matthew's going to come pray in just a second. I had this on my heart for a minute here. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Do you know that song? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use JC. God, I give my life away to you. And I pray that you would use my life and what you've done in me to make an impact in others. In the name of the Father who loves us, the Son who gave his life for us, and the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside. And the whole church said, Amen and Amen. Just keeping that out. Yeah, let's give God some praise. Yeah, we'll do that. An incredible, incredible way to, to figure out your purpose. You're like, man, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, we have a thing called Growth Track, and it starts right now. So if you, you're like, man, I'll just slip out of here, go to the gathering place, and you can dive into Growth Track. Week one is on the first week of the month. Week two is on the second week of the month. And week three is on the, what do you want to guess? I mean, you guys are the smartest service there is, all right? Smartest people I know. Man, you can jump into that. Real quick, man, we love a full house, amen? And uh, there are more people actually in this service in the person, in person, not including the, the hundreds that watch online, than we actually have chairs in this room, just to be brutally honest with you. If you're a fire marshal, we're glad you're here with us, all right? But uh, love some of you guys, fire people, all right? Uh, 
But may we do have three options to worship, 8.30, 10, and 11.30. And uh, I'll just say, if you're a normal river person, if you would... Uh, if you would be willing to say, man, I'll jump into another one of those services to make room for more people who don't know, know Jesus in what is the prime hour, just to be honest with you, that's this service. And if statistics tell us most people who don't have a relationship with Christ or not involved in a local church are going to go to church somewhere between 945 and 1030 on a Sunday morning. And so we're trying to constantly figure out ways to make more room for more people. Amen. Because we want to populate heaven. That's all we want to do at the end of the day, just populate heaven. And uh, not just populate our church, but man, we, it is exciting to be part of a, a church that's growing and that the favor of God is doing what he's doing. It's not because of us, it's because of him. Amen? And so if you could help us and if you'd be willing to do that, we would love that. And uh, man, we want you to know next week I'll be back and uh, we'll dive in, continue in this impact series. And then mark your calendars two weeks from today, Pastor Dino Rizzo, Church of Highlands. It's going to be a phenomenal day. But man, can we one more time give God some praise in his house today? Can we do that? Come on, let's give God some praise. You're the best there is. God bless. See you next week.